What is up everyone, today I have some very interesting news for you. So, without any further ado, let's jump straight into the news. So, first piece of information that we actually have is something that I totally did not expect. The Oculus Quest 2 has been removed from all European Amazon stores. You know, Amazon being one of the major sellers of virtual reality. Well, the Oculus Quest 2 has been removed from every single European Amazon store. You just won't find it on there. In fact, it has returned to the Amazon UK store, but it's just kind of an empty listing. And you may be asking yourself why? Why did this happen? Well, you guys remember the controversy in regards to the facial interface of the Oculus Quest 2? You know, the manufacturing issues that they had, the fact that it was causing issues to people's faces and people were getting allergic to it and having like weird reactions. Well, apparently Amazon thought that was enough to remove the Quest from the store, you know, because of European regulations and things like that. Oculus did change their manufacturing process and we did talk about that before. So now they're working in order to get it back. But currently, if you're looking to buy an Oculus Quest from Amazon, well, you're out of luck. And reading from Upload VR, Facebook says Amazon has temporarily paused the selling of the Oculus Quest 2 in Europe in response to an EU commission filing this week regarding the foam interface. We shared back in April that the foam interface issue has been resolved and we're working closely with Amazon to have the Quest 2 back on sale as soon as possible. So for any of you guys that want to read the full Upload VR article, links down in the description below. Now, the next thing on our list is Google Starline. And let me just say, Starline must be one of the most amazing amazing things I have ever seen. Google trials Starline, glasses free light field display. We've talked about light field displays before. Light field displays allow you to focus on different parts of the image in front of you, giving you kind of a more natural view of the image. It's a technology we are going to need moving forward to AR glasses, to VR. And currently it is not 100% fully ready yet, or is it? Because watching this video about Google Starline makes me think otherwise. This is a glasses-free experience, meaning no glasses on your face. You sit in front of basically a very large screen, and that screen in front of you is a light field display, and you can talk to people through that light field display. And in the video, those people look like real people. And I mean, that's the point. When I first saw it, I almost thought it was fake because of how real it just looks. It looks like you're looking through some glass at the person on the other side. It is absolutely unbelievable. And you guys know that I think of virtual reality and augmented reality as a means to connect people, especially in times like these, where we might not necessarily be able to connect in real life. And this is taking that to a whole new level because it looks real. Nothing so far has looked this real, I don't think. A webcam doesn't even come close and virtual reality avatars are amazing, don't get me wrong, in VR chat, but I think if you want to meet up with your family, nothing is going to beat actually being there. And this is the closest we've come. I am super excited to see where Lightfield technology moves on in this year because it is moving so fast and we're having so much tech this year in regards to augmented reality, virtual reality, and this proves that the limit is, is limitless. I think we have so many options here. It is unbelievable. Now, moving on to a little bit of a gamer side of things, Nvidia has added DLSS support for quite a few VR titles, and in that is No Man's Sky. Now, I think No Man's Sky is going to be one of those games that is going to greatly benefit from DLSS. DLSS stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling, and was created by Nvidia to help boost the performance and visual fidelity of PC games while reducing the demands they place on the machine. It uses AI rendering to achieve high resolution images comparable to native rendering without doing as much of the legwork. So this is going to be quite a big deal in virtual reality when the more games that can support it, the better. And now we have No Man's Sky supporting it. And once again, I do think No Man's Sky is one of those games that could use some AI rendering to get in on there and kind of make the game run a little bit smoother in virtual reality. If you guys ever played that game, you know it can be quite demanding. But yeah, very, very exciting news. I don't have an NVIDIA GPU, so it's not like I can use it anyway, but AMD is going to be releasing some form of a counterpart very, very soon. So I think it's called Fidelity FX. So we'll see what happens there. Very exciting time to be into the virtual reality space. If you guys have been into the Oculus Quest 2, into the Oculus Quest ecosystem at all, you know Oculus is spitting out a 
updates like it's nothing. And I have some very, very good news for you that is going to be coming very soon. We've asked for this quite a bit, and Facebook is working on social home environments on Quest. It's existed on PC. You will be able to invite your friends into your Oculus home environment. And this is something I think absolutely needs to happen because it's just a place you can chill. You don't need to enter a game like VR chat. You don't need to enter another game to speak to your friends. You can invite them into your home environment, edit your home environment, just like you can on PC, furnish it, you know, the way you want to furnish it. I think this, once it comes out, is going to once again, change the way people meet up on our Oculus Quest. So let's read the article. John Carmack says Facebook is working on a social VR experience for the home environment on the Oculus Quest. Carmack confirmed as much in a tweet posted late last month that's only just been noticed. Of course. He explained that the company originally planned to develop multiplayer interactions in the Quest Rooms app, which launched on Gear VR and let friends play mini games and watch content together. Those designs would then roll back into home but Carmack said, we messed up in various ways. The social home experience is being worked on again now, the developer assured. So this is something I'm looking forward to quite a bit. I don't know how that is going to work with the amount of people that we have, like what the limit is going to be. I can imagine we're not going to be able to have so many people in the room. Hopefully the limit is larger than some VR chat worlds because then we can have meetups at a much larger scale. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Here's another exciting one. You remember that splash screen that I said was not in center? Well, it turns out it is actually much more than just that. Oculus have implemented a faster splash screen loading time. So this wasn't just a random Oculus logo. You see, the way the splash screen has worked until now is it was just a black screen with a few loading dots, and then the game usually threw you into a dark environment when it loaded up. Well, now, quoting from Upload VR, the new system splash screen feature can replace the initial loading scene. Since it's rendered by the Oculus Quest OS, it appears instantly, and it isn't subject to the same app-level stuttering. And in their test, Oculus saw a 15 times reduction in black screen time from the last shell frame to the submission of the first logo launch. Which is very nice to see. Once again, just the little things. The little things. Just like the batteries on the controllers now, inside our Oculus Quest. It's the little things that really get me to see that, yeah, maybe they care. Here's another one. Microsoft is working on a consumer HoloLens. I mean, yeah, this was obviously coming. I mean, we have to have one sooner or later. The tech can't just be for huge companies if it is going to evolve and move forward. Microsoft reconfirmed it is absolutely working on a consumer journey for its HoloLens AR headset, even if it's some ways off. Speaking to Wall Street Journal, technical fellow Alex Kipman touched on the future of the platform. But you don't get to lead a new medium of computing if you're not going to be in consumer, Kipman said. So we are absolutely working on a consumer journey for HoloLens. I'm happy to confirm that and say that it is a very large, important part of our strategy. So once again, just something to look forward to. I doubt it's going to be this year. I doubt it's, it might not even be next year. Either way, though, the HoloLens is a very, very exciting device. And we've seen multiple people now review the HoloLens 2 and how well it works. And the fact that it actually works is just really, really cool. And talking about AR and AR getting into the consumer space and becoming for us, DigiLens is building modular AR glasses to accelerate consumerization. So once again, people trying to get into that consumer space, trying to grow the product, evolve it for consumers so that, you know, people one day can be wearing these AR glasses, walking around the street, just reading their news like this. Digilens, the creator of Waveguide Optics, today announced the Design V1, a modular reference headset which the company hopes will accelerate the development and consumerization of truly glasses-sized VR headsets. Road to VR got an exclusive hands-on demo of the Design V1 and the company's latest waveguides. Seemingly frustrated that no company has yet created a pair of AR glasses suitable for mass adoption, DigiLens has set about building a modular reference design to help interested parties accelerate the time to market of affordable AR glasses. The device is called the Design V1, a fully standalone pair of AR glasses with a Snapdragon XR2 and a 50 degrees diagonal field of view. The Design V1 is brighter, lighter, and more capable than any other waveguide-based XR device on the market. Once again, that consumerization, the fact that we, the consumers, not just businesses, can start looking forward to these devices coming out for us 
and maybe we'll actually be able to afford them this time. Buy something and make it a reality. Uh, the next one here is probably one of the cooler things I have ever seen. DVE's Hollow Podium turns regular video calls into holograms by VR Scout. This is definitely one of the cooler things I have ever seen. And once again, one of the things that I cannot wait to come to consumers, it shows the power of movie magic. Because these things you wouldn't think are possible. Like, you'd see them in movies a few years back and you'd think, yeah, we are, we are miles off. We're not. And watching even this video from 2019, which is going over me right now, this is DVE's immersion room. And you can see, yeah, there's a bit of latency, but apart from that, it looks like something taken straight from a movie. DVE Holographics, a longtime provider of holographic co-working solutions, today unveiled a brand new holographic meeting experience that removes the need for professional production studios and expensive projection technology, while at the same time offering high-quality hologram images compatible with existing telecommunication services such as Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and WebEx. Built using the company's HDR, High Dynamic Range, Transport, Direct View technology, DVE's Holo Podiums offer professional clients a streamlined hologram solution that can be operated in a variety of professional work environments. So imagine this, you stand on one of these podiums and you are able to present whatever you want on it. Now, I want you to think a little bit into the future. Imagine we have a podium that scans you as a human being and transports you as a hologram somewhere else. I know that currently for that we need high quality volumetric cameras, but imagine that. Currently we're thinking that's a miles off, but is it really? That is going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you all have a fantastic day or night. And if you guys would like to join our community, make sure to join our Discord down below. Make sure to join our Reddit where I wanna see you posting your spicy memes. If you guys would like to support the channel in any way, shape or form, we've got sick merch down below that doesn't put a huge ad on your body and mugs that boost your FPS by 300%. And if you guys want to be notified about your content coming up on the channel daily, make sure to smack the subscribe button with you for a ding my bell and see you in the next video. Peace.